Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna give you uh, another quick kind of rundown of where I'm at with the uh, Project SUV. It's gonna be our uh, eight and a half second uh, drag and drive uh, SUV. So previous videos kind of going over a couple of the things. This will be a, a hopefully a quick video of going over where I'm at so far. So here, <clears throat> I wound up taking the frame out and originally when the frame was still on the body i had cut up a lot of or cut off a lot of the original lower suspension stuff so we still have the strut towers here and uh they're actually going to wind up going away so real quick uh, my thought is and doing kind of quick measurements i don't have this is front suspension but it's going to be over 2010 to a 2015 camaro and it's a uh, just this uh a strut, kind of like a three-link front suspension, two bars in the bottom, then you're steering uh, tie run in. So um, you could just Google, you know, a 2010 and 2015, 2013, 2015 Camaro front uh, suspension. That's what's going on in the front. I'll have to make brackets. These will ultimately wind up going away. They're here just in case I think of a better idea, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Camaro front suspension. And kind of like when you have like the four wheel drives um, uh, front, like on Jeeps, they do the big front hoop. That's exactly what's going to happen here. I'll mild steel, uh, per, you can actually purchase them. And that'll be to help hold the strut, uh, top of the strut for the Camaro. <clears throat> uh, right now on the frame, I'm leaving this front uh, cross member for now and the back one here until I start putting bars in. Okay. Uh, as per 25.5, so SFI 25.5, 25.3, that's what the chassis is going to be. You're going to have all the uh, four bars underneath, okay? And then you're going to have the funny car, you know, overdriver containment uh, uh, tubes. Um, still yet to come off is just because it's a lot easier to get to it while it's out, is the fuel tank strap, uh, main harness, or main uh, bracket, these are going to come out, the old transmission cross member brackets. Those are definitely going to come out there. Uh, now we can access the top of the welds for the original OE upper control arms. Uh, this being a V8 frame, I think on all of them they do that, though. Um, the upper control arm pockets uh, usually rot out. Uh, fortunately for me, that's not the case. It's like it's just a catch-all for just road grime and stuff, so they usually rot out. Everything else is pretty good besides a little bit of surface rust on the on the outside of the frame, but the inside is fine. Uh, a lot of this stuff here, everything's coming off that you see here. This is going to go away eventually when I put a bar in down there. These uh, body mats are going to go away because for the cross uh, member um, for the upper coilover mount. So you'll st we'll start out now. I'm going to run these two bars. Uh, these are the four link brackets, so I'll get into that in a second. Um, so I have these two bars here. Okay. That's, that's typically, well, that's pretty much what you would see on a, on a bottom end 25, five, uh, chassis, uh, minimum chassis specification of 25, five. Okay. And if you don't know, 25, five is a 750 cert rating. Uh, I forgot the weight, but, uh, no faster than 750s. Now in a 25, five, it can actually be a, um, it can actually be a, everything can be mild steel. Uh, so you can go as fast as 750s with a mild steel. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people used to do that, but I don't, I don't really know of anybody really that are seriously racing uh, doing a mild steel at that point. Um, now, in my professional opinion, if you had like an eight-point chromoly cage, okay, so, you know, or, or, or an eight, excuse me, an 850 chromoly cage, if you have that, right, so you're good to 850s, um, in my opinion, chromoly is actually not safer. And why do I say that? Um, on an A50 cage, on an A50 cert cage in chromoly, you don't even need a dash bar. Okay. And if there's a bad enough accident, so say you're going 850s, averaging, you know, 120 to 150 miles an hour, let's say, right? Let's say you're doing that. And you, you know, you have a main hoop. Okay. The only thing it really is going to save you is the four point. Um, if you don't have a dash bar and you have a lot of bends in, in your A-pillar bars there, okay, um, or you have a halo bar, uh, chromoly, and we're not getting into the welding aspect, okay, there's, there's a debate about that one, 
yes, it has, you know, you got to know what you're doing when you're TIG welding Chrome Alley. But in my opinion, if there's an impact, Chrome Alley has so much um, spring to it. Uh, instead of it folding, it could snap. Okay, just my opinion. Um, I built quite a few race cars and, and a lot of general roll cages for 850 stuff. Um, and I built, you know, several chassis, full, complete builds. So, in my opinion, mild steel is a is a better uh, material for 850 and slower. Okay. So, and that being said, I'm not going any faster than, let's say, let's call it eights, because I'm going for an 850. I want to have a little bit extra power on the back. So, but I, I think one day I'd want to push it. You know, everybody does that, right? You want to kind of push, you know, I want to see where I can go. So, for safety, being a dad and a husband and a responsible business owner, I don't want to risk um, safety. So, uh, and I think now with the rules, you need a Hans device. Um, I don't think you need a containment seat, but I'm going to get one anyway. It is a lot of money. But uh, luckily, fortunately, I'm saving quite a bit of money because I'm capable of doing the chassis work. Now, I haven't done any of this type of work. I changed uh, routes and went to doing a complete CNC shop, you know, CNC turning centers and, and fourth axis, five axis over there. So, with that being said, uh, it's been quite some time, so you know, I'm um, just getting back into it. But, uh, so I'm going to have this, this is Chrome Alley H058. So everything's going to be tigged. It's going to be tied into the chassis and everything else. Um, the correct way. Now I'm going to run the, these, um, frame rail bars, inner frame rail bars all the way up. And, um, there's still some, I still have some debate whether I'm going to, uh, dog leg these bars. So they kind of just kind of uh, go up a little bit in the front because they don't need to be that low in the front so they can ride along the same height as the frame uh, right now I have it sitting on top of this rolling dolly here um, and then as they come up here they're just kind of going to kick up a little bit maybe not as high maybe down there and run up into another cross member a tubular cross member um, not uh, not this one here so and then for the mid so now my a pillar bar is actually gonna it actually drops in right about here forward to this uh, uh body mount so once i get the appropriate measurement i got some wiggle room there'll be a outrigger bar that's going to get right through the frame rail here and then notch right into this bar and you'll have a connecting crossbar and then same thing on the other side for the other uh passenger side a pillar bar with that it, it kind of helps tie everything in Helps keep me within the rules of the SFI for the, for building the cage. I do have the book. I had them for quite some time. So, and you'll have uh, you know the trans kind of cross member style here. I don't think I'll be tying the uh, mid plate into there. It's going to be since I haven't seen it in the machine shop. Uh, it's going to be a um, a billet aluminum mid plate as well as a billet aluminum motor plate. Um, so now uh, originally I had the you know. <laughs> I wasn't going to go this far and everybody kind of might say that or think that or whatever. And the reality is real quick, this factory rear probably would have worked, but not forever. Uh, it's an 8.6 with an aluminum center and with steel tubes. Okay. And originally I had, that. I was going to do nine inch uh, conversion. I actually welded the, uh, new, uh, new style Ford outers onto the rear. And in doing so, um, I, I, I don't want it to break. Like it would just ruin your entire weekend. Right. And then I would sh changing the suspension anyway to a, this had a parallel four link, you know, factory with a pan hard bar. Um, and I was going to go to a triangle to four link. And so that effort alone in, in, so again, in my opinion, this may seem silly. I'd have to do all the math, whatever, figure it out, make a cross member, upper cross member for the for the upper control arms. Okay, I could have utilized the lower control arm mats here. It would have been fine. Uh, the geometry on the suspension when I plotted it in my program looked fine. Um, but there's a lot of limiting factors there. Uh, not so much adjustability, just more... Well, I guess it would be adjustability, but um, appropriately putting the power to the ground. And 
I realized with the geometry, it would have been a struggle to get this thing to do what I wanted. I would have been playing with more of a uh, leave RPM, launch boost, timing, and I don't want to do that. Uh, if you know enough, you know that if, you're, if your chassis is so limited, you're now, you're now getting into stuff where you can make a mistake, you can have a, 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 the wrong you know, boost curve correction, whatever, okay? And because you're trying to get it to leave the line the way you want it to. When you could have the power you have, now granted you can play with boost numbers, but you can have the power you have, but then you're just making minor changes to get it to do what you want to do. Uh, so you're not drastically making changes and everything. The rule of thumb when you're at the racetrack and you're testing and tuning, make one change once. Yeah, it's timely. Yes, it's cost, you know, it costs money, if, especially if you're renting track rental or you're waiting four hours to make one pass at some racetracks on a, on a freaking Wednesday night. Um, so, but that's kind of the general rule of thumb. Make one change and then go from there. Unless obviously you know what you're doing, but if it's new, you know, whatever. So in my opinion, actually having a, a, a standard pro four link for me right now is a better way to go. That the, the frame is out of the truck, which was no effort whatsoever. The freaking body, body bolts, the body mount bolts literally just, they were almost a little over hand tight. So everything came out real easy. It was real, it was, it wasn't a struggle whatsoever. I got proof. I got they're all over there. So it wasn't an issue. Dropped it down wasn't an issue. Getting it out not a problem. I'm gonna have it sandblasted too to make it a whole lot easier. So in reality, to do the four link makes the most sense. So back to the rear. I wound up getting a Rhodes uh, Fab Nine, okay, uh, with no ends on it. Uh, well, it's hard come pre weld. I think it was like. I don't know, 580 something bucks, 600 bucks, whatever it was from uh, Summit or something. And it, it just makes sense for adjustability wise and ease. And it, it's a peace of mind, right? Yeah, it's okay, it's 500 bucks, or five, 600 bucks. And then the brackets. Luckily for me, I had a buddy who has, I used to have a plasma table, uh, has a plasma table. He whipped me out a set of four rank brackets, uh, similar to the Tin Soldiers mid uh, no prep brackets. So that's what I'm going to run. And the best part about those brackets is, as well as that they're, they're designed for the power rating we're going to, 1,000 to 2,000 horsepower in there. If, uh, with their pro um, uh, no prep brackets, mid to no prep brackets, the lower control arm is conventional, lower link is conventional to a standard four link. The upper is shorter. So uh, you get a little more bite, a little more, you know, it's just quicker for the launch. I don't have 2,000 plus horsepower uh, to make a traditional equal length link, uh, four link, uh, move as fast in time. So you need a shorter upper to do that. So they have a video, Tin Soldiers is a video out there on their conventional and their uh, no prep brackets. So um, I have a mock-up set there, which I'm going to start doing before I get the ones uh, laser cut out and ready to go. Um, and the only reason is, it's like, okay, I can buy theirs. Yeah, 500 bucks for all, all brackets. All right, let's, oh, let's say 225 uh, just for the frame brackets. All right. Okay, yeah, I can buy them. I'm going to cut the shit out of them. So for now, what I'm going to do is just make sure I get it right before I make a mistake on these cheap mild steel. Um, well, they're going to be mild steel from 10 soldiers, but it's just cheap hot rolled uh, plate brackets I'm going to utilize and they're, they're sitting right there. So they're kind of temporary. Um, see them there. So, uh, before I go hacking up those brackets, uh, I'm going to make sure I know how they're going to be, how they're going to lay out before I do that. So they're there, they're ready to go. I just have to do all the kind of floor X bracing and the 25, five, uh, specification for the underneath and get that ready. And a beautiful part about that too is, uh, I'll walk you over here. I think that's it for that. Uh, I have the uh, Denali sitting on jack stands on the rockers. Uh, so I have a main hoop in here, okay? Now, <laughs> I could send it to a shop. I don't have a bender. I used to have a bender. I don't have a bender anymore. Now I could send it to a shop and have it done. Um, I don't like the way other people do it. I used to do it for a living. Uh, I'm just gonna piss me off, so. Um, I'm not buying a bender. I'm not, I'm not doing that. So I did some research and found out that, uh, on paper, uh, a, 
1966 to 67 Chevelle, Chevy Chevelle, Malibu, has a very similar uh, main hoop layout that I think would work. And originally I was going to have uh, a buddy of mine bend the main hoop. Um, but this 66 to 67 main hoop fits perfectly. Right height, I got four and a half inches of drop into the floor, perfect for the outrigger. Um, since there's about eight, eight inches in between the, the rocker and the frame on the, from the stock. And there's two holes there because originally I was going to have it kicked in and only do an 850 cage. Okay. So it would have been, it would have brought this bar a little closer to the frame rail. I'm not doing that now. So I just, I'll just have to patch those two holes. So if you are ever doing a trailblazer SS or, or uh, an envoy, or a trailblazer or an envoy, um, you can go buy, you know, a six point for a 66 to uh, 67 Chevelle, right? Um, and if you do have a bender, you can actually kick these in. If you only want to do an 850 cage, kick these in, what, two and a half degrees each side? And you'll have a really tight, very tight fitting main hoop. And then you could just do your back bars any way you want and your door bars, whatever way you want. Um, with this, with this disclaimer, taking my, uh, words, you know, take my words carefully here. Uh, this will not fit. Well, you could, you could push it forward of the B post, but then it's like, you know, right here next to your face. So probably not ideal. Uh, I prefer having main hoops, a little setback. It's more comfortable. My head is nowhere near it if I'm driving this thing on the street. Um, but I will be with a funny guard cage just from doing it for so many years, um, with people, uh, doing cages like this, that it is a street car that they're going to street race on, but they want a cage for safety when they take it to the track. So, uh, I always kind of make sure I put it a little bit behind. Um, it just makes it all easier. So now that the, the cool part about that is I'm not kicking it in. It is very tight against, you know, tight enough against the rocker. Um, just like anything else, I can tack it up to the bottom part of the frame, then lower the frame, then take everything in uh, that I need to on the main hoop side and then raise the frame back up to the body and be done with it and then do everything else. So when I have the main hoop and the A-pillar bars in, which I have to have them bent, uh, when I do that, uh, those are the first kind of four points that I will be taking to the ch uh, chassis itself, the bottom part of the frame. Uh, where I'll be raising and lowering the frame and then putting it back up, bolting it down, and that's it. Everything else then runs through the floor and ties in, you know, from main hoop down to your uh, inner frame rails, your tube. So, a uh, quick shot. This is the Rhodes fabrication. Uh, be prepared for the tubes not to be straight, especially if you order them without uh, any ends on it. Uh, the welds aren't pretty, but it holds, you know, I, I can't judge. It's been a long time since I've been TIG welding. So, uh, I don't do it every day and I don't even think I do it every month now. So, uh, and if I do do it, it's for a little stupid stuff. I got to fix or do something just stupid. Um, so here that is. And then I went up, I bought, I bought a 10 point off of a guy off Facebook. So I only paid 500 bucks for the, uh, for the roll cage, uh, used, just never, never put in, never installed, but uh, it's a chromoly pre-notch to a point where just one end of the straight pipes are pre-notched and it's got two bends. This was a halo bar kit, right? So we're not running a halo bar. Uh, you can run it in 25.5 spec, but you it has to be driver behind the uh, uh, main hoop. So your head has to be behind the main hoop as per their specification. So, uh, yep, doing 20, doing the 2010-2015 Camaro front suspension, um, Fab 9-inch in the rear. Uh, keeping obviously just mostly the frame here, um, uh, turbo LS, you know, came in LS, but I wound up getting a 6.2 uh, L92 out of an 08, um, whatever. I don't know what it came out of, but so that's it. Uh, quick update kind of sort of wise for the chassis, what it's going to get, um, next, uh, uh, next video is actually going to be uh, me uh, doing a time lapse of doing all the pre, 
uh, just kind of getting these main pipes in there so I can get rid of a lot of the, you know, you have the old spring perch right here, okay? Cool spring perch right there. Um, that's going to go away after I get some of this other stuff in. So once I uh, get to that point, I'll have all the other tubes in where I know the basic stuff's going to be, not going to be in the way of the engine or anything like that. Um, and for the four link brackets in the back. Now, real quick, you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm not going to run a, a bent. So you're going to run a bar from uh, there to here, this way, perpendicular to the frame rails. Okay, that's going to be the, the end of the bottom part of the chassis, that those plates, four-link plates, chassis plates are going to sit on. And then I'm going to run these bars into that, notched into it, and be done with it, okay? Uh, later on, I'm going to come back and cut it for a drive shaft tube. So since uh, I'm going to get one of those two, one by two or whatever, you know, pre uh, U uh, or an oval, sorry, an oval, uh, one piece oval bar. And then when the time comes where I get ride height and then all this stuff like that, I'll then cut that bar. Okay. Cause it'll have all this bracing on it with the cage. You know, it's one of the last things I'll be doing, um, when I'm getting the drive shaft in, right? So I'll have the engine in, rears, or it'll, be, it'll be a roller at that point, right? Uh, and I'll be setting up drive shafts. So once I'm ready to do that, then I will cut that bar, cut it out for the width of the donut I get, or the oval I'll get. And then I can, I can cope it or, or notch it carefully. And then I'll fit the donut or the, you know, the uh, um, oval in there to where I'm comfortable enough where there's where the separation of the chassis is going to happen, where I'm not going to be whacking the the, the drive shaft on a a pre bent hoop that's there. Uh, typically, I used to do that um, on a on a known kind of thing. I don't really know. I don't really want to, and I don't really want to guess, you know, and, and do all this stuff. So I know I'm going to have three and a half inches of suspension travel max, but I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm not guessing that right now. So that'll be one of the last things I do. So you'll see it with a flat bar going across. So if you see that, just keep in mind, I'll be cutting that and putting the oval in there after everything is all said and done, after the four-link brackets are on, after everything is all done, because when I when I have that bar in there, right at the back of the four-links, there's gonna be another bracket going up to the back of the main, or the back uh, cage assembly. So there's gonna be plenty of reinforcement, no, no reason for it to really kick or move. And yes, should I be doing this on a chassis table? Absolutely, but it'll be, be done on a concrete floor and jack stands. Um, and I'm going to do the best I can. I no longer own, I used to have two chassis tables, no longer own them. Um, got out of the business. Uh, both racetracks had shut down. Uh, Akko Raceway and English Town first. I uh, was English Town and then Akko shut down. So uh, back in 2015, I kind of shut the doors of the shop I used to be in Lakewood and just got into doing CNC machining. So that's all I do. So um, yeah, I don't even own a notcher anymore. So actually a little trick, fun fact, I'm using my older VF3 uh, there uh, with a V-block vise and any of the straight bars or even somewhat bent bars that won't hit the head like the main hoop, won't hit the uh, spindle. Uh, I've just ran a simple program <laughs> with a uh, 5 8 roughing end mill to come down and do the notch for me. So a little just sticking in the front of the machine and it's already pre-programmed, uh, find the, the face of it, the the front of the pipe and just hit you know cycle start and there you go i'll have notches because uh, i'm trying to plan it out not to be cheap about it i don't have a bender but a lot of the stuff is mostly going to be kind of straight going in that's why these frame rails are going to come all the way up here so um so as they come up so you'll have um here i might try to get something bent to make it look nicer in the front but over here as uh, for the outrigger for the A pillar bar as it comes down, um, it's actually going to be uh, cut right through the frame. So at an angle and then right down to this, to the frame rail. And then you have a connector bar in. So that's how that's going to be. Um, and same thing for the uh, main hoop. So then the, the, everything will just kind of sit onto that. Um, and then uh, you'll have a. I think I have enough room. I'm kind of body dropping it slightly, but I think I'll have enough room. Um, what you don't need to do is have a rocker bar um, 
right out here, but I'll actually what I want I'm doing is putting that, that bottom door bar, rocker bar, flat uh, bar on the inside. So I believe that's what I'll be doing. I don't have to, I'll, I'll look to see what I can do because I can actually just cope and notch the body mass because everything's real tight in there and run it along the top and just be real safe about that. Um, you can actually do that, run that bar along there and have your main hoop and everything else sit on top of that too. So I'm going to be playing with that concept, that idea, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's probably what's going to happen is where I'll put that bar down here and the main hoop and the A-pillar bars are going to sit right on top of that. So it's just a little easier to do uh, that way. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the gist of it. Again, I'm going to do some stuff and get it get it roughed out uh, chassis-wise and then have it all sandblasted so it'll look really nice. And uh, no rust or crusty stuff's going to fall off on the starting line and I won't get kicked out. So keep that in mind, folks, when you got an older vehicle that's been driven 160,000 miles and in the Northeast especially or wherever, a lot of dirt and stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's what's going to happen. Uh... Again, next video is going to be me kind of uh, time-lapsing with some commentary and some thought on doing uh, all the uh, sub, uh, sub body inner frame rail chassis stuff. Um, hopefully, hopefully not too much longer after this one. I have another video before this that I'll upload, but uh, hopefully get some more videos coming up on this build project on the main channel. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be we're having uh i'll be able to put in some good quality cnc machining videos on making certain stuff for this um i do do a lot of stuff that i can't post here for aerospace companies and the u.s government so therefore uh i'm kind of limited on what i can post for that so i'm trying to keep it uh diverse <laughs> uh, so um so you'll see some nice videos on some stuff I'm CNC machining uh, for the engine, for the chassis, uh, for this project. So stay tuned to that. I'm trying to do my best, uh, do more in 24. Uh, I, I'll try to live up to that. But um, thanks, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for the next video coming out. And uh, hopefully it'll be sooner than later. And we'll try to make progress. My goal is to attempt without killing myself um keep my myself to run a business my goal is to uh make it to hot rod drag week in september i believe this year that's my goal um time is against me so uh thanks again like uh share subscribe comment anything i'll respond to anything you guys uh ask or say or whatever you want thanks guys